Good evening, everyone. Hi, sir. Hello. to the uh, Finance Committee meeting for the 3rd of February 2021. Emergency vaccine procedures were all well rehearsed here, so we're not with doing. And uh, filming recording of the meeting um, will happen uh, in line with the local government openness bodies regulations 2014. We're not recording or filming, or we're recording audio, but we're not filming the meeting, but other members may or may not be filming the meeting. Okay, Terry's just said, no, Terry, you're not on mute. I always thought TC was top cat. <laughs> <laughs> right, so item one is submissions for public. <laughs> um, no, I can't hear you. No, Terry, we've got, you've gone. I think Terry's it's lost the movie, actually, Terry, it's gone together. Yeah, Terry, try sign language, then we can hear you. It, it, it does say that she's got the connection. Shoot your video on. We can wait. We can wait. Okay, she's leaving and coming back in again. Yeah, let John back in. John in. If you keep yourself muted on the other end, guys, then I, mean, I can just, um, if you put your hands up, I'll keep an eye on the screen as we're going round and take it a bit slower, because the microphones are quite sensitive. from the public and I don't believe you have any members of the public here so I'm happy to move over that one if no one else is in that slot. I'm taking that as a everyone's happy to move over that. Yes. Item two is receive apologies for absence. Mm -hmm. I don't believe we've got any. No, because we're all present. present. That's right. Item three is declarations by members under the Local Government Act of 1972. Do we have any? I'm playing. Yes, please. I would like to take um, Sagro Special Audit and Account Committee for my uh, list. Okay, Sharon's noted that. Thank you, Franklin. Anything else from anybody? No. Okay. Item four is announcements from the chair. Um, 
Welcome to the uh, penultimate finance meeting of the uh, uh, financial year 2020-21. End of story. <laughs> <laughs> Item 5, to confirm the minutes of the meeting held on the 16th of December 2020 as a correct record. Do we have a proposal for the minutes? Ed's proposing Franklin seconding. Do we have uh, a vote in favour for the minutes? That is unanimous. Thank you. Bear with me a second. That's okay. Yeah. That's quite a lot. Um, is it worth me just signing this throughout the meeting and we can just get on with essentially item at 8.1, which is where uh, Rachel went through the report? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Sorry, I imagine. And they can use the multitask. Yes, sir. So save everyone, uh, save everyone time. So item six is to deal with any matters arising from the minutes to meeting held on the 16th of December 2020, uh, not covered elsewhere on the agenda. Do we have any? No. no. Item seven is to deal with matters of the correspondence referring to the work within the scope of the finance committee. I don't believe we have any. No. Item eight is to deal with the following financial matters, and 8.1 is the 2020-2021 income and expenditure report. So can I hand over to you, Rachel, for this one, as I sign the minutes? Yeah, thank you. Uh, you've got the report in front of you. Um, a lot has happened um, since the 25th when this report was written, um, and I sent uh, an email out to chairs um, as we've had additional grant funding for our site closures, but um, I will come on to that. So this report is a snapshot literally on the 25th of uh, January, So, uh, but it's still a very positive report, I think. Um, overall total income has achieved £906,479.58, which is just over um, the annual um, budget level. Um, obviously, excluding Mayor's Charity, which miraculously has raised £4,343.25, so that's fantastic as well. Bear in mind um, the period we've just gone through. Um, this total income compares to 957 pounds uh, from last year, which on paper at that time was just over a 50,000 pounds drop, um, which we had already sort of accounted for um, um, with uh, by slashing budgets and changing budgets since June. Um, um, so the details of the higher income are actually um, broken down in, in the table below. So you, you can actually see that uh, they, it has drastically dropped. However, um, it still outperformed the uh, levels that we were expecting. We did slash uh, the total budget for all sites to 53,000. Um, and we've obviously outperformed that. It's pointless changing budgets at, at, at this point. Uh, but what I would say is that we held those budgets for next year's um, uh, budget as well. So we've carried 53,000 across all sites. Um, we've worked on a worst case scenario, so we're almost certainly going to have more income than uh, we originally projected, which is positive news. Um, so overall, at the moment, we've uh, got um, or achieved £58,721 um, of higher income as at the 25th of January. Um, I did have confirmation that most of the invoicing and things had been sort of done up to date and, and in fact slightly ahead, so that might account for some of this outperformance. Um, but it's still a huge drop when compared to last year's £112,000, um, just over £112,000. So, as I said before, we've outperformed the slashed budget, um, and we're standing at 110 percent of, of the slashed budgets at the moment, which, you know, sort of uh, a few months ago we could not have predicted. So um, uh, that is fantastic news. Um, and the the total income over performance um, has been enhanced by external grant funding linked to the site for businesses that were within the leisure industry and those that uh, were paying business rates were entitled to and miraculously yet again um, 
we were allowed to apply for the local restriction support grant that I had mentioned before, the, uh, which is a refund against the business rates that we've been getting against the three activity centres. And um, without any warning, um, last week we received notification that we were getting um, an additional payment of the top-up grant um, that the government has issued um, purely because the leisure industry had been forced to close. And we fell within that. So we had a lovely payment that, um, on Monday of just over 24000 that has really impacted um, positively the forward plan. And Sharon um, um, is going to sort of get one up on screen um, at the end of, of this report just to show um, the situation um, sort of moving forward. I, I did send a copy out to Tony and Ben, and um, it really puts us in a strong position, especially after the period that we've just gone through. So, in summary, the, the income position is far better than we initially expected. Um, at the same time, on the next page, which is the expenditure, right away across the board on the table, um, is below the expected 79% that we were expecting for the um, period to mid-January. So, uh, again, that just further enhances um, the strong position that we're in, and we will, without any doubt, have a substantial additional year-end surplus um, that we can then reallocate towards some of the larger capital um, um, projects that uh, council wants to do, in particular the Brookway extension, because we haven't officially budgeted for that yet. So, um, on paper, this is looking extremely, extremely positive. Um, you, you can see um, from the totals on the um, the budget. Um, the total uh, budget uh, for expenditure is just over a million, and to date we've only spent 668,000. So, um, you know, it's it's all pointing in, in the right direction. Uh, and if we go on to the last page, which is the breakdown of the youth income expenditure, um, and actually income budget, I'm going to need my glasses for this one. Um, on the, on the front page, so that one, on the front page, the, um, showing the expenditure of the youth grant aid and um, core youth funding and the youth skate park funding, at the moment we're showing um, a 39,000 underspend on the core youth funding alone. I know that we've got a few more months to get to, to go and we will be recruiting um, uh, youth workers, but there's going to be a, a fairly substantial understand there that um, will go towards uh, these other larger capital projects. Um, on the on the back page, um, showing the um, the external grant funding, the positive activity spending, those budget drawn, so those underspend won't impact now, but it will help fund the future budgets, and, and that was um, acknowledged at the last meeting. Um, um, so that will um, help fund um, the youth worker recruitment uh, for the next financial year, and um, youth reserve um, will stay stable. So I'm, I'm absolutely amazed how well the finances have come out of this awful, awful situation. And it, Sharon, could you put that forward to plan it for? Bear with me, I will try. I just want to show Councillor, it, it's just a summary page from the five-year full plan, because just to show the, the positive impact. Um, Delft had to secure the uh, 30,000 for the Bailey's Court Play area. That had always been built into um, into the full plan anyway, but um, she also applied for an additional fifteen thousand or uh, fourteen and a half thousand. So if we get that, that will be an additional bonus that isn't accounted for within the full plan at the moment. So um, 
you know, that, that even a further improvement. So at the moment, as far as I can see, this is a worst case scenario for us at the moment with this board plan and it's still looking very positive. Sorry, the minutes just opening. Oh. All right, so I, I, I hope this on your at the last minute. Oh. Oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's showing that welcome screen thing, so I'll try. Oh, right, okay. So now I can find that. Yeah, okay, hands. So, can it go any smaller? Uh, okay, <laughs> if, you, if you scroll down to the bottom, Sharon. Yeah, round about there. That help? I think so. Where are we? 19, 20, 20, that right. Um, right. At the bottom, in the grey boxes, that's um, um, projected year-end surpluses. So 89,371. That's where we're standing at the moment um, for the, the current year-end. And that, of course, is if all um, budgets are either reached or utilised, and we're already 110% ahead of the income budget, and we're well under the expenditure budget, so we're going to have a much bigger uh, additional surplus um, um, in addition to that 89,000. And then just moving over, um, the, so the projection at the end of next year, thanks, <laughs> Sharon. Uh, 63,623 pounds, so that's that. And just following it all the way along to the end, we did uh, originally, when the budget was um, approved, we were in a, a deficit situation of about 24,000, I think it was off the top of my head. And we're in credit um, at the moment of, you know, just over 2,000 pounds, um, which I, I think, you know, um, it is going to set council up really, really strongly um, moving forward, um, so that these capital uh, planned projects can proceed. So, I, I don't think I've got anything else on that, Sharon and Ben. And unless anyone's got any questions, I was not even say it's really positive considering yeah. that we set freeze back in January. So it's yeah. even it's even better than when we were looking at it back then, in January. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. yeah, it's been a while. Sorry. I was going to say, thank you for making it clear. Well, it's just good news that, you know, during these difficult times, and I know that a lot of other sort of town and parishes are struggling, so um, I think, um, you know, everyone should be really proud of the position that we're in moving forward. Any questions quickly? No, overall, just looking at the figures, which, you know, they're, they're, they're very self-explanatory. But I'd just like to bring to the attention that we're approximately spending, well, it's not, uh, not approximately, it's 28.86% on youth provision. So that's practically a third of our budget. Just like to bring that attention to the other councillors. I don't think it's actually that it, it's that high if you include earmark reserves, but the earmark reserves stay stable or reduced. They they don't increase at all. They it just sits there as a protection of an asset. So um, the actual core funding um, that council are actually um, sort of paying out. Um, the actual core funding, the uh, 41,200, um, that is the, the, the main um, youth budget and um, that is funded by, um, partly funded by external funding um, that has been agreed um, sort of going through into sort of next year and I think the year after possibly. Um, so the, and the youth grant aid that we have put in there, that's 12,500. Um, in real terms, that could go within our grant aid budget, but um, we separated it out so that um, 
um, grant aid could be paid out to, to, to local youth, youth groups. Um, and that is fully at the uh, discretion of leisure youth and amenities. Um, the, the external funding um, on, the, um, on the other page, which is the take 28,000, um, that is external funding specifically for you. So that also has to be taken into account. So the actual true um, additional budget, excluding the, um, the reserves that council sort of chose to allocate and keep, um, is actually the 53,700 that includes 12,500 of grant aid funding. Just to put it into perspective. Yeah, it's just it has, I've got on the second page. I mean, you could say that the expenditures you've got here include a youth provision. It is on the 2021 is 22.15%. Yeah, does it include? Regardless of whether there's a bit of external funding or whatever, it's still showing that the expenditure is for 2021 is 22%. Yeah. Of total budget. Yeah. That's all right. I just want to bring that to the attention of the other councillors. Right. That's all. Thank you. That, that's where this um, youth breakdown does come into play. Because, I mean, I, it's difficult because mm. it's in a developing budget. So um, it, it's been quite hard to, to try and get it in a full, clear format. But hopefully um, it, it is now um, with, with the additional sort of annex that council had requested. So, but yeah, it, it is showing overall 22%. Anybody on the other end of the call have anything to say or ask questions? Because you're you're squashed on the side of the screen, so we can't really see you. Have you finished with this? Yeah, sorry, now, Chair. Right, you, uh, John's got something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's about the the line. The red line which starts on the left hand column 115.78 which is the estimated preset for band d property um now i, I thought we said we we're going to put it up by 0.5 percent didn't we or we got that wrong so it says um and it's zero percent yeah it's it, it's actually because you can't see all the information on this sheet. That one one five seven eight, that's from previous years. So the well, no, no, I realise that. Yes, I realise that. I've got the I've got the real sheet in front of me. Yeah. If you look at um twenty one twenty two, it's got zero percent, and I thought we were going to put it up by point five. Have I got that wrong. It was Fraser, wasn't it? It yeah. was Fraser. We we uh, yeah. oh. I thought we said well, no. I think we decided, John, that we would just keep it at zero percent. Oh, yes. right. Yeah, we did. Oh, definitely. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. My blood ran cold then, John. Right, does anybody else on the other end of the call have anything? No, I think, I think you said, I think it's what you said so far. Oh, yeah. What's that? Oh, did you hear me? No. Oh, I was just saying that I agree with what's been said so far um, on both sides, so I'll do nothing else to add. Thank you, Terry. Um, one last thing. Where in this provision is the £16,000 that we're paying to the cricket club for cutting the grass? Is that in there somewhere? Um, that is in, because uh, that's going to be on the actual sort of firm breakdown, and uh, uh, number of code 8046, so just bear with me. Yeah, ground maintenance on page 15. It's it, it been included in there, and... Um, under the history and 2020-21 details in the far column, halfway down it has got the FTC cricket club worth of maintenance for 43 weeks, set to November, and it's got the amount in there. And it's, it's actually 6,380 that we actually paid for them, 
that we can do a um, case for additional materials. Um, with we give them approximately £16,000 a year for them to cut the cricket pitch. No, it's of, £6,000. Of, of which I've done a stack of research on this, and I have yet to find another cricket club that don't maintain their own square at their own, at their own expense. And we're paying in the region of £16,000 to the cricket club a year to cut their grass. That, is, that will come to, I'm not sure, I think it will be, because Dell's getting quotes at the moment for external companies rather than... But there's not another cricket club in the no, country that a council pays them to cut their fields. So that, so that would come up to the council or... We could save £16,000 a year. I mean, they've got their own money that they can fund it themselves. Anyway, if it's, if it's not for this meeting or the fear it's finance, we don't know what meeting it should go under. Well, I think the quotes will come to March for council, if that was getting. Hmm. Right, are we happy to move on from this now? Uh, can I, can I add? Are, we, are we able to put that on the agenda for next uh, board council? Because we, we mustn't lose that, that point. Well, we, we will because Dale's getting quotes. She's meeting with external contractors and then council can obviously make an informed decision as to which way they want to go. So yeah, that, if that will be on the agenda anyway. So that was yeah. a formal action. Yes. yes, it was. Yeah, yeah. and then yeah. okay. Right. We are, we are definitely looking at that one. Um, um, I think Ed has. Ed. Can I stop sharing his screen? I'm happy to stop sharing, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Ed, go ahead. Uh, thank you. Uh, Tony, good point. Uh, can you supply that information to help us see that? Because yeah. I think that's a very, it's a very strong point that we are uh, aware of uh, giving support, but at the other time, giving too much support. So yeah, it's, it's good to see the background. And the problem there. Thank you. <laughs> Marvellous. When, when we figure by half, I don't think it's the five sixteen thousand pounds either. You know, when the full report finished, then um, that that will be shown. So Rachel, is there anything more on eight point one in terms of going through the reports in the pack? And um, no, I just want to say, I, I think it's really positive news. Yeah, I do as well. Yeah. So, well, should we move on to item 8.2 then, which is to, uh, which is the 2020-2021 petty cash statements, which are in your pack. What's all of the uh, payments for um for the speaking time I believe for uh, uh, to the support that um um it is uh, it's, uh, created within the office. So um there will be a bit more information um that will come in March or April uh, for the year end for this. Thank you. 
kind of reputation problem. They also carry remotely. There are no questions for me. Everyone's saying they're good. Thanks, Kelly. Yeah, proposed a second debate. Proposal of the pressure petty cash statements. Frank mm -hmm. Finn, seconded by Fab. All those in favour? Thumbs up, Terry. Cool. Number. Yeah, you know. Can you sign I yes. certainly can. So item 8.3 is to approve bills and direct debits. Well, Tony, you had a question on this. So yeah, it's, it's the payments on the 8th of the 1st, 2021, uh, reference to the various rates to presumably South Gloucestershire Council, of which we get back, which is something which I mentioned right at the beginning of the pandemic, that any place which has a rateable value of uh, less than 50,000 will get their business rates back. So why are we paying? We're paying and then we're getting back? Yeah, that, that's what I was um, speaking about earlier. The local prescription support grant that we get yeah. is linked to that. That's the rebate on the business rate. Yeah, which is so, something which I mentioned right at the beginning of the pandemic. But, and okay. I, it, it, so we've been guessing it, we've got the full amount so far, as soon as they released it, um, which was, um, I think, November to December when they actually opened it, so I've lost, we applied the minute it came out, um, and so um, they did a lump payment at, at the start, and we get a payment every two weeks um, during the closure period, and linked to that, that's where we've got this um, additional unexpected pop-up from the government to say. Well, it's not an additional unexpected pop-up, it's something which we are entitled to, which I mentioned right at the beginning of the pandemic. No, no, it's, not like suddenly, it's not like suddenly like, a, a wish of magic wand that suddenly we've got this money, it's something we were due. No, no, sorry you've misunderstood me. What was unexpected is that we would be entitled to the additional pop-up uh, for, for being in the leisure industry uh, and closures, but people that applied for the business rate rebate were entitled to it. Normally, councils are entitled to it, and I actually had to go and contact South Gloucestershire to, to get them to confirm that we were actually entitled to it and they said yes so yeah i i mean as long as we were the minute it opened for us to be able to get a business rate rebate and the um the um and the, um, the health loss uh directive we did we applied space away and yeah we did um i believe we did sort of highlight it early on but it, it wasn't open at that stage so as soon as it did open we did apply and we have had four refunds and still receiving them. Does anybody else have any questions? No, yeah, thank you. Oh, all good. Do we have a proposal for the monthly expenditure? Michael, seconded by, oh, Ed. All those in favour? Terry? You know. Thank you. Thank you very much. So item 9 is to confirm the date and time of the next meeting, which is uh, Wednesday the 5th of April at 7 o'clock. And uh, what's left for me to do is to have the meeting closed. So thank you everybody. Yeah, can I just mention, um, thank you then for, uh, for going through those um, in such a, a you know, speedy time. Um, and just to mention that I'm lightheaded because I don't think I've ever had a meeting that's only lasted half an hour. Wow. Thank you all for helping it last half an hour. Yes, absolutely. Thanks a lot, everyone. Take care. I've got, I've got, I've got for a meeting in eight minutes, so I'm in Northampton. Wow. I think that would even be a record for us. So while, I'm, while I'm on, can I quickly... Uh,
um, face the pen pain me, we've got the internal turbulence screen thing. Can we have a sent an email to you today just to fix that that I find? I've seen your email here and I haven't checked my phone at this moment, but it, okay. it may be difficult to fit the date sign at the moment in time. Okay. Let's see. Uh, we'll see. I will reply to see Rachel, don't worry. Hello. I will go through my Thank you. inbox. Thank you very much, councillors. Good night.